Hello, it's Dr. Daniel Cameron. Welcome to my first All Thing Line blog. There have been a lot of articles that have come out uh, in various newspapers saying that long-term treatment is not effective for chronic Lyme disease or persistent Lyme disease symptoms. These articles have all started coming out from an article in the New England Journal of Medicine that was just published. I'm going to go into that article with you and show you that that Norwegian article enrolled people who were quite sick for 2.7 years and they didn't come up with an effective treatment strategy and uh, it's important to uh, go ahead and still push for more effective therapy for Lyme disease patients. I'm discussing today an article in the New England Journal of Medicine March 31, 2016 titled Randomized Trial of Longer Term Therapy for Symptoms Attributed to Lyme Disease. The chief author was Berende and all the authors for, from the Netherlands. 281 patients enrolled in the trial. The average age was 43 to 48 years of age. 53 to 56% were men. 27% had an erythema migraine rash. 29% had a positive IgM Western blot. 64% had a positive IgG Western blot. The median duration of symptoms was 2.7 years. The median number of previous treatments was two. And median number of days of prior treatment was between 30 and 40 days over the two treatments. The symptoms attributed to Lyme disease were arthralgias, musculoskeletal pain, sensory disturbance, neuralgia, neurocognitive symptoms, and fatigue. The quality of life of the patients was measured by a short form 36 physical component of health called PCS. A PCS score is typically 50 for the general population it's 42 for diabetes, 41 for cancer, 37 for Fallon's clinical trial, 32 for Klempner's Lyme disease clinical trials, and 31 to 32 for the Norwegian Lyme disease trials. Now, using a PCS score, it's clear that the Norwegian Lyme disease trial patients had a quality of life that was worse than diabetic and cancer patients. The typical questions on a short form 36 PCS scale are, compared to one year ago, how would you rate your health in general now? Were you limited in the kind of work or other activities? How much physical pain have you had during the past four weeks? There were three, three treatment groups. All groups were treated with two weeks of IV ceftriaxone. The first group was treated with oral doxycycline for 12 weeks. The second was treated with 12 weeks of oral clarithromycin plus oral hydroxychloroquine. The third group was treated with 12 weeks of placebo. If you look at this table from the Berende study, on the left, the PCS score was 30 to 32. Over time, the PCS score would rise to about 35. So the black line reflected ceftriaxone followed by clarithromycin plus hydroxychloroquine. The red line was ceftriaxone followed by placebo, and ceftriaxone followed by doxycycline was the third line. So if one looks at the average gain on a PCS score, there were three points, which has some clinical significance. So the headlines based on the fact that there wasn't any clear difference between two weeks of IV ceftriaxone plus two weeks followed by oral led to these types of headlines. On MedPage today, the title was Long-Term Antibiotics Fail Again in Lyme Disease. Focus on Lyme and Antibiotics for Persistent Symptoms Called Unhelpful. And the New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch was titled Prolonged Therapy Shows No Benefit for Persistent Lyme Disease Symptoms. Now, if you look again at this particular table, even though all three groups were similar, whether you treated with long-term antibiotics or not, the big problem is that none of the groups were close to the general population. In fact, they were 15 points below the general population on a PCS scale. So if one looks at this ruler and one looks at the three gains on a PCS score for the study, 
they were still 15 points below the general population and they're well below the quality of life for diabetic and cancer patients at the end of 50 weeks of follow-up. So the editorial could have read, news, too little too late for some Lyme disease patients. The editorial could have discussed options that would have helped these patients. One is more effective initial treatment, not 2.7 years after the fact, earlier retreatment, again not 2.7 years after the fact, treatment for co-infections, including Babesia, if it's present, more effective protocols for retreatment, for example, four weeks of ceftriaxone has already been shown to be more effective than two weeks, and individualized treatment based on response to treatment. Thank you for joining us on our All Things Lyme Facebook and blog.